In this lecture, we will discuss test monitoring and control. Test monitoring and control is the second test activity of test planning. And in this lecture, we will cover the main activities of test monitoring and control. Let's first see why test monitoring is necessary. As we know, test planning draws the roadmap for the test activity, which includes scheduling like when testing will start, when it will end, when test analysis will start, and when that will end, similarly for all other test activities. But in reality, it is not possible to provide the fixed timing and follow it due to many operational issues. That is the reason it is advised to monitor the current status of each test activity against the planned one, so that if there is any lag, we can take necessary actions to meet the planned schedule. That is why test monitoring is important. Now let's see what is test monitoring and control. Where we will see what is test monitoring, test control, and test monitor and control. Let's first see what is test monitoring. Test monitoring involves the ongoing comparison of actual progress against planned progress using any test monitoring metrics defined in the test plan. Let's have a look into this. In the test planning stage, we decide when the analysis will start and when it will end. While monitoring, we compare the current status of test analysis with the planned schedule. This is nothing but monitoring the current stage of the test analysis. The next term is test control. It involves taking actions necessary to meet the objectives of the test plan. What it means is, if we are not able to achieve the deadline, then we can increase the deadline or we can increase the resource to meet the deadline. The last point is test monitoring and control are supported by the evaluation of exit criteria, which are referred to as the definition of done in some software development lifecycle models. In this definition, word evaluation of exit criteria is important. Let's understand what it means. Evaluation of exit criteria include checking, assessing, and determining test activities. We have to check test results and logs against specified coverage criteria. We have to assess the level of component or system quality based on test results and logs. And we need to determine if more tests are needed to gain confidence. These are the points based on which we need to evaluate the exit criteria. Exit criteria will be covered in more detail in Chapter 5. For the time being, just try to remember the provided information. One of the important points, why we do test monitoring and control, is to communicate information to the stakeholder. Let's see what type of information we share. The first point is test progress against the plan. The second point is if there are any deviations from the plan. And the last point is information to support any decision to stop testing. So these are the different information we can communicate to the stakeholder, and this information is gathered during the test monitoring phase. Now let's summarize all the points we covered until now. Test monitoring involves the ongoing comparison of actual progress against planned progress using any test monitoring metrics defined in the test plan. Test control involves taking actions necessary to meet the objectives of the test plan. Test monitoring and control are supported by the evaluation of exit criteria, which are referred to as the definition of done in some software development lifecycle models. Evaluation of exit criteria include checking, assessing, and determining test activities. Main activities of test monitoring and control stages are to check test results and logs against specified coverage criteria, to assess the level of component or system quality based on test results and logs, to determine if more tests are needed to gain confidence, to inform stakeholder about test progress against the plan.
any deviations from the plan, and information to support any decision to stop testing.